Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So we have just completed the decals, and as you can see, they're all very well set, looking painted on using the Microsol and the Microset system, uh, as well as a little bit of um, matte coat, and then of course uh, gloss coat to get them set down really smoothly. So if you're not using um, a matte coat and you're just putting the decals on normally without the use of, um, you know, a melting system or something like that that'll that'll really set the decals, and you're just using water. You can go ahead and apply your metallic colors as we're going to do here in a second beforehand because you're not worried about the dull coat or the matte coat or whatever um, flat varnish you're using uh, dulling your metallic colors down, which is what we're going to get into next. So basically what we're going to do is our last bit of base coating. We're going to paint the bolt gun or the weapon, uh, this harness or this sort of set of piping and uh, these little bits of communication gear and whatever this little bit of piping is here as well as other various things we're going to paint that in citadel's lead belcher which is a great color very very common super easy nice and nice and quick uh, and then we're going to do the shoulder rims and the icon in retributor armor which is another base color from citadel uh, you'll notice that these are uh, one of them is obviously a, obviously a dropper bottle that's just because i transferred one of them so it's it's uh, this is the same exact pot just a, a different uh, in a different system that's all it is Alrighty, so our first uh, color of lead belcher, it is a base color by GW, so all we're going to do really is just start to slap it on bits of the model that we want to be silver. So the bolt gun itself, I'm going to do lead belcher, the whole thing. I'm also going to do these little bits of piping and stuff again here, or this sort of harness. So this, all this stuff up here is going to get lead belcher. Um, another part in another bit. Um, that you'll look out for is on the back of MK4 power armor. It's got these weird pipes and then it's got this little like gear looking thing. So we're going to get that uh, lead belcher as well as these little bits of piping and you know whatever this stuff is back here. Um, so I'm going to go around the model and I'm going to do the lead belcher in all the different various place, uh, places and then we'll come back after a minute. Alrighty so we have finished our lead belcher which is our GW Citadel base color. We went ahead and did lead belcher on the bolt gun, two thin coats on the actual um, piping and strapping on the chest piece here, as well as a little bit on the communications gear and this whatever this little pipe is. Um, if you did make some mistakes, like I went really liberally around this backpack area and then parts of the back of the backpack area, don't worry about that. Once we do retributor armor, we're going to come back and clean up everything anyway with our base color of blue. Uh, but next up, we're going to do our first thin coat of retributor armor. And again, this is going to be all along stuff like the um, the shoulder pads, um, the actual icon, so just like we did lead belcher. We're going to come along to all those gold areas. And if you make any mistakes, like I said, we're going to be using um, our base color right now anyway to come back and clean anything up, so don't worry if you make any mistakes. Alrighty, now that I've got my base color of lead belcher, which is the silver color, and our retributor armor, which is the gold color, now we're going to get into shading. I'm going to grab a little bit of known oil, which is a shade color from Games Workshop. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to run it into all of the areas that we want to have shadows, or the areas that we want to have depth. So basically if I run it along the edge of the boot here, basically we're going to go into all of the nooks and crannies, all along the model and give it a little bit of depth. Now this step could be kind of tedious which is not a big deal. Also I know that um, a lot of people are nervous about doing black on white so painting um, black on a white color because we make a mistake it's quite difficult to cover up but just keep in mind that if you do make a mistake we're gonna do a, a full weathering wash of the entire model when we're done here with this step and so it'll really help to blend those colors together. So again, my next step is to go around the whole model using non oil, which is the black color, and putting it in every bit of the recesses. This might take a little bit of time, and as I said, might be a little bit tedious, but it's really going to bring everything out. So I'll see you guys when I've continued on and finished up. So with uh, non oil complete, which is a GW Citadel shade color, with that in there and complete and drying, as you can see, it's a little bit wet on the bolt gun still, but it's created lots of shadows, lots of detail. It's really made the armor stand out a lot more. Um, if you can see on the back of the backpack there, if you get a little bit of spillage or you, maybe you, you don't quite get the shade in places that you want, kind of like around here, that's fine. Leave that. It'll look like, especially because these backpacks, it's got some kind of exhaust vents. It's got some kind of intake. It looks, 
it looks like air or something comes out of there. If you got some black or some known oil there, don't worry about it. It'll look like some sort of exhaust. But anyway, so we've got the known oil down on there now. And next we're going to do Agrax Earthshade on all of the gold bits or the Retributor armor um, bits. So we've got the icon there, the shoulder trim, stuff like that. So see you in a minute. All right, so as you can see, I have finished placing all of the shades on the gold, which is the Retributor armor, and the silver, which is going to be the lead belcher. And it's really brought out all the details and given the figure lots of depth, all the little nooks and crannies, lots of shading and lots of shadows and lots of detail. It was really brought out the details, especially look at the, uh, the World Eater insignia, if I can get my focus to cooperate. That's been brought out really nicely. After a little bit of highlight and a little bit of gloss coat, it's going to shine super cool. So now what we're going to do is an all-over shade. So we're going to cover the whole model to really dull the color down, make it sort of battle weathered, make it kind of look like it's been through action. It's not all pristine and he looks like he's just brand new out of the factory. So to achieve this, we're going to use a couple of things. So the first thing, the actual color of the shade is going to be Seraphim Sepium. This is from Citadel. This is a shade color. And then if you have this, uh, it's a lot more helpful, but you can use whatever medium you like. This is just Lamian Medium, which is also by Citadel. So basically, this is a shade with no pigment. So this is the, the actual medium that they use to produce these shades. Uh, but of course, it's got no pigment and stuff, and so it's just colorless. So basically, what we're going to do, we're going to mix up these two together. One part Seraphim Sepium and about six parts Lamian Medium. So I've got this little tiny container that I'm going to do it in. Now this is really important um, when you're doing an all over shade, especially over white, to really keep you uh, from making big mistakes that are very difficult to cover over, especially with the white. Uh, it's best to do less if you're not sure the effect you're going to get. So if this is like your first model, do a really thin down layer of this color or this wash when you're doing it all over to see what it's going to look like and you can always go back and add more. It's much more difficult to cover over your mistakes or to cover over things that you're getting wrong here at this step because you are using white. And so feel free to, to take this in a couple of different runs to make sure you got the right coverage. I like a just slightly grungy, slightly weathered look and I, I like to achieve that by using again six, maybe seven parts depending on what we're looking at of Lamian Medium and one part Seraphim Cephium. So I'm gonna rip, uh, mix that up and then I'll be back in a second. Okay, as you can see here, I have got my wash mixture. This is again, um, six parts uh, Lamian Medium or the shade medium to one part Seraphim Cephium. And as you can see, it's super thin. If I run it on my finger, you can kind of see it catch all of my fingerprint and run into all the, the little bits of my finger. And that's really what we're after here. So we're gonna do this all over the model, blue parts and white parts. And this is really the fun part of this because it's super easy. Anybody can do this. Grab him real quick. Make sure you can see. And then just start slapping this stuff on. Now, uh, again, this is going to really even up a lot of the other colors. And so if you are concerned about, like I got some of this um, blue and, and gray colors here on the back of the... Um, the uh, for lack of a better term, his butt armor. Um, that's going to get evened up, no problem, by the shade that we're putting on right now. Um, same thing, the decals, you're more than safe to run the shade over the decals. It's not going to affect them at all. Matter of fact, you want to, to make sure that the decals look like they've also been weathered. And so you're just going to go around the whole model, face and all, paying attention especially to the face. Make sure you don't let it accumulate too badly. Um, but you do want, of course, it to, sh to get stuck in all of those crannies and those nooks and these little bits and bobs basically over the entire figure. You can ignore things like the bolt gun. The bolt gun or the weapon has been pretty significantly weathered already, uh, so that doesn't need any more. But basically just going to go around the whole model, like I said, blue and all. Getting this stuff everywhere. And the great thing about Seraph and Sepia, especially if you thin it down a lot, is it looks a lot like dirt. It looks a lot like a earthy sort of very light dirt color, which is perfect for a lot of different theaters. Um, places that it's arid or places that it's dry in the environment tend to leave a much lighter color when it comes to weathering. So if you look at desert environments or more arid places, 
um, the stuff that accumulates in armor plating or the stuff that accumulates on uniforms tends to be a lighter hue uh, as opposed to if you were in such as like a, a forest environment where that stuff tends to be darker uh, that's usually due to like the different um, types of things in the air as well as the vegetation that's present like trees or whatever and so this is a pretty good bog standard color for most things and I like it because seraphim when it dries it leaves a really nice um, tone so I'm going to apply a little bit more in places that are lower on the model um, just because dirt and stuff like that would tend to accumulate lower and then um, places that you would like your hands or your feet especially in between your legs stuff like that that's where this stuff's going to build up in real life so dirt and stuff like that is going to get stuck in all of those little places on your uniform or in this case all of the places on this chap's armor plating so uh, really important um, when you do line a bit of this if it starts to dry don't go back over and touch it um, you don't want to um, smear it or you don't want to leave brush strokes and so use a little bit of caution in doing the places you've already been if you get a little bit too much shade somewhere um, all you have to do, let me see if I can get him to focus again. All you have to do is really carefully, so I got a little bit in the eye. That's okay, but if you need to, run your brush in there to move it out, just like that. So um, that's actually looking pretty great. I'm going to let this dry. See, I got a little bit there, a little bit too much there, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and the wash has nearly completely dried the Lamian Medium and the Seraphim Sepium wash. And as you can see, it's really brought out a lot of the detail, really given a lot of character to the model. Uh, it makes them look nice and dirty, like it's much more realistic and much more accurate to actual real life. And so now that that is dry, we have a little bit of option um, on how to proceed. But basically, we just have the basing and then the eyes, and we're pretty much done here. Um, if you would like to, though, on your gold bits especially, so like on our Retributor armor bits where our... Uh, Legion heraldry is and then of course our shoulder pad trims Optional things to do are to come across it again with the same color to lighten it up a little bit and then to come by with your um, your choice of gloss coats uh, To really make it shine. Um, I'm not going to do it in this case because I think it looks quite nice the way it is um, You can also optionally come along with a very light silver a very very bright silver almost like a chrome color and Do the edges of the shoulder pads to give a really sharp highlight which again, I'm gonna pass on because I think it looks quite nice right now. Um, but next up basically is the basing and then we'll finish off with the eyes and then we'll, we'll be uh, calling this guy done. So I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Take care.